So, first thing I want to cover today, you know, before the questions start coming in, is I just want to talk about um, the importance of having top advisors in your corner getting started when you, you know, with your home care business, with your assisted living business, you know, any businesses you're trying to start. I want you to make sure you got these top four people in your corner as soon as possible. <clears throat> and I know you think like, okay, I can't afford a lawyer right now. I'm just getting started. How I'm going to afford a lawyer, an accountant, um, stuff like that. But <clears throat> believe it or not, you don't have to go, you don't have to pay for them until you need them. But you definitely want to interview, interview a couple, you know, until you find the right one. <clears throat> find a couple, um, sit down, do lunch with a couple of them until you find someone who you can feel like is a good fit for you, who understands what you're trying to do, your background, your business goals, and stuff like that. And um, it's four top advisors that I would suggest you get in your corner immediately. Um, first and foremost, you want to have a mentor, someone who's, um, who's, who's in, who inspires you, Someone who you can look up to or look towards as a as a goal to say, you know, eventually I want to, you know, they're they're farther along the path that you're traveling. They're they're a little bit of further away from you as far as in their progress. So somebody you can look towards and say, oh, hey, look, I want to I want to have you in my corner because I want to eventually get to where you are. Um, and that's pretty much what a mentor is for. They're just kind of looking back and giving you some 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 help you know along the same journey that they already went so you can avoid the roadblocks and the mistakes and the, the things that they have already overcame in your journey so that's one thing that that i mean i feel like that's the that's probably the most important person that you want to have in your corner as a mentor um the second <clears throat> the second most important person i feel like that you need to have in your corner is a, an accountability partner now your mentor an accountability partner can be the same person, obviously, but um, mentors are a little more. So if they're if it's a mentor that you that you feel like you know that you're excited about and they're doing a lot of business, obviously they might not have the time to constantly be available as you need an accountability partner to be. So your accountability partner is someone who you set goals with on a weekly basis, or you share your goals with on a weekly basis, and they hold you accountable to those goals. Whatever those goals may be, um, it might be startup goals as far as, well, getting your LLC, getting your website done, getting your license complete, getting insurance, like some startup goals. It might be some operational goals. Are, you know, your company's already up and running, but you, you know, you, know, you, know you, you feel like you need to do more and you need that extra push. It might be to make more phone calls, do more interviews, um, network with more companies and business in, businesses in your community, whatever that goal is for that week you need to you need to have this outline and sh share it with an accountability partner so eventually so every week your accountability partner say like you you guys share you share your goals on the sunday and then on that friday hey look <clears throat> how did you do how many calls did you make your goal was to make 250 calls this week how many calls did you make how many um networking events did you meet how many um, lunch, lunches, lunch meetings did you set up? How many meetings did you set up with potential referral sources? How many caregivers did you hire or, or interview? How many, um, you know, did you get your website done? Did you finish your logo? Like, whatever your goals are for that week, that accountability partner is there to hold you accountable um, each and every week. And it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out phone call. It's just somebody who... You can constantly communicate with your goals moving forward, and believe it or not, with some, it's 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 kind of hard to keep yourself motivated after a certain amount of time, because I mean, if it's just you, you could just you you could in your head you could just keep putting it off. Oh well, okay, I'll do it next week. Okay, I'll do it tomorrow, or I'll do it next week, because there's no real accountability within yourself until you kind of develop it through, you know, practice and having an accountability partner. But when you have another person, another human being that's going to check you at the end of the month, at the end of the week, say, hey, look, this is what you said you was going to do. Now let's go back and look at what you said, you know, look at what you was going to do. Um, see how you did. 
And what what's going to happen is you're going to feel that pressure. And you need that pressure. You need that anxiety to be like, okay, man, I got two days to accomplish these couple things. And, you know, before I have to speak to this person, you don't want to lie to him, obviously. He's not doing anybody any good. So, you know, you, you do everything you can to get those things done. And then what you don't complete, you and your accountability on this short phone call, just basically saying, okay, what did you do good? What 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 were some of the things that you did you did this week that allowed you to make the progress that you made? You kind of discuss it, you understand it, you journal it, um, and then you say, "Hey, look, what what were some of the things that um, held you back this week? What were some of the things that you couldn't? Why? What what are some of the things that got in your way? What were some of the distractions or issues that you came across that kind of stopped you?" from getting the things done. And a lot of times we think it's external uh, forces stopping us from getting our things done, but a lot of times it's in our own head. You know, we create, um, you know, um, fear and anxiety and, you know, we do all these things in our head that stop us from doing what the things that we need to do. So we could blame it on Netflix. We could blame it on um, our kids, our spouse, our, you know, whatever the world may throw at you. But, at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to overcome those external forces and also those internal forces that's working against you as well. Doubt, um, self-esteem issues, whatever you're dealing with that's stopping you from doing, taking yourself to the next level and doing, accomplishing your goals and reaching out to people. And one thing I'm going to just kind of touch on this real quick while I'm thinking about it. We're... A lot of my clients, coaching clients, we get you, we getting them, we getting them every, every, everybody all set up. And then when it's time to go actually do the business to get out here and start shaking hands, it's like, it, it goes like everybody goes silent. Like you have to get out into to the community and start communicating and telling people about your business. Start with people, you know, um, start with the church, start with the, um, you're, you know, at your job. I mean, if you're not working in the same field and you don't feel like it's a conflict conflict of interest, but just start telling people who you care about or who care about you and um, spread the world like that. Get used to talking about yourself, how great your company is and um, the changes and the, and, the, and, the, and the great things that you're, you, you plan on doing with your business. Like you have to get comfortable with that conversation so you can eventually get to the point where you're making these phone calls to these different referral sources where you're going on these different visits to these different diff these different referral sources in your community to start develop the network um to do business and and this is another thing that an, an accountability partner has to you know hold you accountable to and you have to definitely hold your account yourself accountable to it too um if you had a lot of people including myself believe it or not i, I everybody struggled they say Public speaking is like the biggest fear in the world. You know, that's like people fear public speaking more than they fear death. And, that, and you know, that's just not nothing made up. Like people really fear that. And if you've just been, you know, working a job for the last 10, 15 years, just holding your head down, not really saying much, just doing what you do to get, your, get, get the job done, you're not really forced to, you know, come out and talk about yourself, talk about what you do, talk about how great you are. You just don't have, you just don't have that. That's just not part of your reality, you know, but when you become a business owner, an entrepreneur, um, you have to learn how to talk about how great you are, the service that you provide and what you plan on doing in the community to make it better. And um, if this is a struggle for you, I would definitely suggest finding a Toastmaster, a Toastmaster um, group in your area. They're everywhere. It's like a uh, it's like a group. Uh, most people probably heard of it, but if for the people who didn't, Toastmasters is like a group that teaches you how to um, overcome public speaking fears, actually. And it shows you how to actually um, speak publicly. I think they teach, they talk about debating, debating, you know, different, different, just different strategies and techniques for or, oration, just for speaking in public, for oration. So um, definitely, that's just a quick tip. Jump on, you know, jump online. See if you can find a Toastmasters group in your area and just start going. They usually hold them at like little town halls. They might be had, they might hold some at churches um, and stuff like that. Find a Toastmaster and it's usually very cheap or free. And all you do is you go in there. They teach you different techniques on how to public speak. I went there. 
Um, it helped me a lot. So I definitely recommend everybody join the Toastmasters if you have a problem with getting out in public, talking about your business, and um, overcoming that that fear of um, talking to people. Um, we kind of strayed from accountability partner, but I just wanted to make sure, I just wanted to kind of touch on it because it's something that I deal with a lot when I'm dealing with my coaching clients. And it's like, how many calls did you make this week? They're quiet. Like, well, well, this, this came in the way. And I know it wasn't the life that life didn't get in your way. You got in your way because you had some fear to overcome within yourself to get on that first, make that first phone call or go out on that first, um, meeting or go, 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 you know, go into that first, uh, facility and talk about your company. So these are things that your accountability partner will be able to help you with. Um, and you set goals, even if the goal is to go to more networking events, you can go to meetup.com and just go to basic business events. They don't have to be about any particular business, but they have business networking events where all different companies, uh, I mean, professionals from different industries come and network. And that's another thing that you could do. Go to meetup.com and find a, a networking event. And um, obviously, Toastmasters might be on there as well on meetup.com. So we talked about the importance of a mentor. We talked about the importance of an accountability partner. And um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them while I'm discussing it. And I'm going to go back through later um, so I don't miss nothing. The third, the third person that I feel like is very important for you and your business is um, an accountant. <clears throat> um, we don't think about it in the beginning because we ain't making no money. <laughs> so you're like, well, I ain't even making no money yet. So I, I don't really need an accountant. But again, being your guys's, you know, pseudo mentor online, I'm telling you guys to get an accountant, not a, a um. H&R block tax expert or somebody down the street to do your taxes out their house or out their apartment. I'm not, that's not an accountant. I'm talking about a, a certified public accountant who's licensed and, and, a, and a CPA, a certified public accountant, somebody who has that actual designation. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. This is somebody you definitely want to have in your corner going forward. Um, the first thing most accountants are doing right now, they're, they're going to help you get set up with QuickBooks. So all your business finances are being processed through the QuickBooks because you can connect your business account to your QuickBooks account and you can add your accountant to that QuickBooks account so she can see it. They can help you with it, you know, and everything that you begin to do, even right now, even if you buy something from me, a business in the box, um, a virtual coaching, a done for you program. All of that stuff is those become line items in your accountant, um, in your QuickBooks, and th- and your accountant can use that data, that information to cu- create a better tax situation for you going forward, and um, making sure you don't have to pay pay to pay taxes. Make sure you get your tax done to the most you know advantageous way for you and your company. To the you know she want to you know they're gonna their their job is to you know give you the most tax advantages. As possible. So that's the first thing most accountants are going to set you up with um, is getting you set up with QuickBooks and helping you connect your business bank accounts to those uh, to that QuickBooks account, which she has also has access to or her or her office does. Somebody in her office will have access to that account setting setting it up. So you say, OK, again, how do I find an accountant? I found my first accountant. At a um, SBA Small Business Association meeting, score meeting, and it was just a little lady um, in the corner. You know, she had her little booth, and she was just like, you know, the fact that she was there told me to, you know, that she was used to working with new companies because only new people are, you know, like brand new companies, people who barely even have an idea are going to the SBA just to, you know, this is like the first step most companies take to get their business off the ground. So the fact that she was in there told me that she was comfortable working with people who didn't have any money yet or, you know, just had a great idea coming coming into the coming into the game and, and, and just she just wanted to be supportive and give people that, you know, that early expertise for their businesses from an accountant's perspective. So, um, yeah, I found my first accountant at a SBA score meeting. She 
Come to find out, you know, once we, you, I met her and then I saved her um, information. I didn't contact her for about like two years later as far as, as far as um, actually for an accountant. After I had already, you know, been two, two years of trying to do my own taxes, doing my own budgeting, bookkeeping and stuff. And I just, you know, I made a mess of it. So I finally contacted her. She helped us out. She got me in QuickBooks and all that. And um, <clears throat> took us from an LLC to an S Corp. And, you know, just, you know, we started getting paychecks of just like the employee. So she, she was able to set me up. But I'm saying all that to say that the accountant is probably, after your mentor, your accountant is probably the most resourceful per person that you have to count on in your, in your, in your, as far as your top advisors. It's so many things that they have access to, especially a seasoned accountant in your community. Like I was saying, she, I, she was just had this little booth after um, SBA. But when I finally went into her office and, you know, she had a big office, she was like the head of this huge office. She had like 15, um, accountants under her bookkeepers and it was just crazy i couldn't believe that she had this whole setup and she's been doing it for like 20 30 years and you know um you know i felt really good because you know she made a great impression on me at the um at the sba that you know such a good impression that you know i, I kept her card for two years and then i finally ended up doing business with her so um even though she had that great big old firm she was still, you know, willing to work with small companies. So I'm just saying all that to say that, you know, you, you can meet these people in the world, in these different events. Um, I wouldn't just go scrolling through the, 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 the Internet looking for an accountant, nothing like that. I would definitely like start at the SBA, see if they have any referrals and some an accountants that work with small businesses and then start, you know, networking from there or going to like meetup groups for for small businesses and um see if anybody has any referrals there. Usually the person who organizes the meetup on meetup.com, they usually have the most contacts. So that would be the person I would contact about an accountant. And um, getting started, it, they usually, like I said a second ago, they, they, if you don't have any business going on, like right now, you don't really have any business money coming in, but you're still spending money. So it's still money going out. So if, if you're taking your paycheck your tax your tax returns whatever you use to fund your business you need to have them set you up on quickbooks cuz you're going to eventually want to set up a you you going event hopefully as soon as you get started you set up a business account and they can hook that with quickbooks and that's usually a very inexpensive thing that most CPAs will help you with and as you grow you know you you'll get more services from them they'll be able to um help you out and give you insight cuz they'll be checking on your quickbooks and letting you know um, things to do and not to do. One thing she told me to do <laughs> a while ago, she was like, please stop going to the liquor store with your business card. You know what I mean? She said, that's just one thing <laughs> that the IRS does not like to see. So, I mean, I might, you know, be on the way home from work or from the office and I just stop past the liquor store and get some, you know, get some drink. And I would, that'd be the only card I have on me. And I like, I'm not going to the ATM. I'm not going to go switch all account, nothing like that. And I'll just use my business card. And she was like, look, you got to, you can't um, use your business card for liquor. Like if you're doing an event or you hosting something like that and you buying this and this is going to be an expense that you're going to use, then that's one thing. But you just going in there to the liquor store, you know, two, three times a week because you just don't want to, you know, go to the bank or whatever, transfer the money around. You, you know, that looks bad from, from the RS perspective. And that's just little things that I just didn't think about and I didn't know. You know, I'm just got my business account. I had my my money in there, and you know, we just flowing. So, just small things like that can really help you in the long run to you know avoid pitfalls in the future. And I'm not even going to tell you. I'm I'm not even going to start on this call how important it is as far as filing taxes. And um, I know people always say write offs, but you know that don't even I don't even know what that means. You know, you know, you just have expenses, and you know they know how to you know, manage all your expenses. They know everything. We think we know. Um, but if you're a trained professional doing it, then obviously they know much more than we do. So <laughs> it's no, it's no, it's no, it's no reason why you can't have an accountant, um, have you set up. You might, it might take like four, 30, might take 
two hours to get you set up on QuickBooks and maybe 250 bucks to 400 bucks to get set up. And then now you have an accountant, somebody you can look to um, for all your tax reasons, finances, bookkeeping. And then also outside of their outside of their um, normal role as far as just taxes and stuff, you got to remember. And this is why I say I want you to get somebody seasoned. You got to remember these people are dealing with people with people who have money. They're dealing with people's money. So they know who has money and who doesn't. Not saying that they're going to reveal that to you, but you you create an incentive program and you create a referral program and say, hey, look, can you, can you, can you, um, you know, reconnect? I'm sorry. My thing is keep trying to reconnect. How do we create a referral program so you can refer my company to your other clients? And I mean, she's an accountant. She's a businesswoman. She has no problem sending me referrals and telling people who need services for home care to the people in her, you know, um, her clients. I was able to put a, a, a brochure rack in her office. You know, um, she allowed us to do a presentation, you know, so to some of her clients, we get invited to some of her dinners and stuff like that. So it's a lot more valuable than you think. It's just not about taxes, bookkeeping and stuff like that. The business professionals who've been in the community for a lot of years have a lot of access to other people who can eventually become potential referral sources or clients for you and your company. And that's very important to have. It's leveraging. It's you coming into business six months, a year, leveraging her 20 years in the business to get access to her network that she's been creating. So the value in that, I mean, if you don't understand that, it's, it's nothing else I can say. Like the value is, in that is, is, it's invaluable. It's priceless. So um, <clears throat> that's, that's what I, you know, that's just one thing I wanted to touch on as far as, you know, getting an accountant or well, a few things I wanted to touch on as far as getting an accountant. So the top four advisors, I said, I'm going to discuss top four advisors. The first one was mentor. The second one was accountability partner. And the third one was um, an accountant. And your fourth one is a business attorney. And a, a, you need a you need a lawyer. Um, <clears throat> there are when you enter the world of business, you you become vulnerable. You become a target. Um, and the more successful you become, the more people are gonna take shots at you. The more you're gonna get sued. You're gonna get. Um, People trying to run scams, uh, caregivers fake falling, caregivers stealing, um, clients, you know, you know, un, un, unhappy clients might come for you. Uh, people may get hurt. Um, it's just so many things. And people might do stuff to you that you might have to go on the defense, on the offense. So clients may not pay you. Um, they might, you know, get, get, get some service and, you know, they, you know, they might get behind four or five payments or something like that, or they might owe you a, a large amount of money and you want your money. You need your money. Don't them caregivers work for that, sir, work, work those hours and you need to get that money and they don't want to pay you. Um, a client, a caregiver might try to take one of your clients, you know, even though you got your contract signed, okay, you got a contract signed, who going to enforce it? How do you enforce that contract? How do you make that caregiver or that client um, pay you for breaching that contract and hiring that caregiver outside of your, you know, outside of your contract, outside of your company? So, like, I'm saying all that to say these are real things that have already happened to me. These are things that we've already dealt with. There's people going to make reviews on the Internet that aren't true. And you and you have legal grounds to, to dispute those reviews and to get them removed if... If if they're not if they can't be proven to be true, and who has the time to do all of this stuff? Who has the time to send cease and desist orders to caregivers who are trying to you know steal steal your clients? Who has the time to put this paperwork together? We're we're entrepreneurs. We're business people. We're trying to get our company started. We're not trying to litigate. I'm not trying to be in no courtroom. So you need a business attorney. You need a business attorney. You need somebody who who understands the legal world, the courtrooms, um, from a business perspective, and who will be acting in, in your favor. So somebody you could call, in, and if you just have questions, um, 
somebody you can call and you know you can get a straight up answer that you know that you know this this grounded in, in legal basis. Um, and then you might have a partner that you start out that goes rogue and then they, they try to do something and, you know, hurt you. I'm just saying, it's just a lot. It's a, it's a messy world in business. Once you start doing good, people start coming for you and you start making some money and you're going to have to have an attorney. And again, you don't have to go spending a whole bunch of money on no attorney, attorney in the beginning. You can find an attorney at the same, at the same places that I'm suggesting as far as, um, the SBA uh, and meetup.com. So meetup.com is probably the best place you want to go for networking with other business professionals. No matter what industry that, that we're talking about, meetup.com is going to have a group in your area or somewhere close. If you like in a rural area, if they have, you have access to a major city, there's going to be groups there that's meeting. And like I said earlier, you just contact the, the person who runs that group. Usually the organ, they call it the organizer for um information on these different professionals you want to learn uh, you want a, a business attorney who's been around a while who's established in the community um you can't be no snake uh lawyer forever so if you if you if he just coming out of law school he's just trying to get himself together i'm not dealing with you i can't you know even though you're gonna charge me less and all this but you don't got your i need somebody who has tentacles all throughout the court, all throughout the system, who got relationships with the judges, relationships with everybody in the, with the clerk of courts, all of these people, you want to make sure you, again, like I was saying, you leveraging the accountants, um, multiple years of business experience and business influence in that community, you leveraging that lawyers and your law office, the, that law office is experience, their access. And let me tell you something about court. I mean, a black man in America, I've been in courtrooms quite often and it's, it's, there's no, there's no law. I'm I'm, I'm saying like this, there's no justice. There's no balance. It's money, lawyers, relationships, fraternity. That's what the legal American legal system is all about. You can get out there and march about it and all that. If you, if that's your thing, go ahead and do that. But when you get into business, you need to understand that you need a lawyer on your team not just any lawyer, a lawyer who's connected in that community that you're going to be doing business in and somebody who has relationships with the judges, with the prosecutors and with the clerk of courts and all other business um, people in the community. So you want somebody who's established, but somebody who's established, but also is open to working with a new a new entrepreneur. You know, as long as and when you go, you know, you, you go sit down and you go have a meeting with them. Some of them charge you for the first initial meeting, you know, um, just for the consultation. Some of them don't. So you just have to, you know, like I said, go through like the meetup.com or uh, the SBA also. They can point you in the right direction to people, to, to lawyers who are working with new entrepreneurs. Cause they obviously, they want new, they want new clients and you know, they never know what entrepreneur is going to come in there serious and get their business off the ground. So they'll give, they usually give us a chance. So that's pretty much it. Um, a mentor, just to kind of recap, we understand the importance of a mentor, um, having somebody who's further along the path that you are that you are traveling to kind of guide you and you know help you prevent the pitfalls and the roadblocks that you will face or they face, and they can show you how to circumvent them, go around them, you know, um, stuff like that. Accountability partner was the second thing that we kind of discussed. The importance of accountability partner. I mean. Me and my accountability partner was so crazy at one point when I was doing real estate, we used to do bank account checks. Like what you going, like what's your goal for this week as far as how much money you want to make this week and how many deals you're going to close this week. And we used to, you know, like, look, okay, at the end of every week, we're going to show each other bank statements, you know, I, and, and, you know, that was account. man, it's no more. Anx- I, I, I never had that level of anxiety when it's like, man, this dude, I told this dude I was going to make five grand this week. You know, I ain't did nothing. I, my my thing is my, my account on negative. <laughs> you know, I'm struggling. But because he was there, and he was a good friend of mine. It wasn't just anybody. Because he was there pushing me, pushing me, and I'm pushing him. We was we were actually helping each other and and, 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 and achieving goals that I know we wouldn't have been able to achieve without each other's accountability and and, and um 
you know, those those shared commitments and goals. So uh, find an accountability partner, man. Find somebody you can respect, um, somebody you can trust, somebody who you believe, you know, that um, they have your best interests at heart. They're not going to judge you. They're not going to never say nothing negative. They're never going to tell you um, why something won't work. They always gonna say how how can we make it work, um, and that's what accountability partners for. We just covered the importance of an accountant and a business attorney. And just real quick, I always I just when I start to think about you know the when I you know people the, the people that we around and the uh, friends and the family. You know it's kind of hard in the beginning because you gotta. Remove yourself from the people who are telling you, man, even like you got it's two things that has to happen. Certain people you can't remove from your life because they're just family. You can't do you, know, you just got to stop telling them all your business. You know, you just have to stop talking about what you're doing to avoid the negative injection of, you know, doubt. You do not want you don't need someone close to you. Who knows you inflicting doubt on your dream that early. So it's best to not even say nothing. See them in a year when you got when you fully established, you may not be where you want to be, but you didn't got, you know, you didn't made some real progress. And then it's it's gonna be too big to hide. It's no use of telling somebody about a vision. It's no use of really telling nobody. I mean the people who who aren't gonna be a part of it or aren't gonna hold you accountable for it. Who, who are not your top advisors and are not working with you to do it. They don't need the information, period. You know, um, Facebook don't need the information. They don't need, Facebook don't need to know you need, you, you, you're doing certain things unless it's time to show Facebook or show social media because this is the part of the promotion of what you're doing. Not just, you know, just talking, <laughs> you know, just talking about it. It just breeds um, unnecessary critique unnecessary input from people who i wouldn't trust watching my pets let alone um watching you know critiquing my visions or my dreams if i wouldn't even let i don't even trust you i wouldn't even let you know where i live at so why would i'm gonna tell you my biggest vision or my biggest dream and allow you to you know put doubt and 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 fear and anxiety that I that I'm already going to experience in my own self. <laughs> you know, I don't need no help, you know, struggling with this thing. So you just need to just be quiet. Keep it to yourself. Until it's so big, it's it's no no you can't hide it anyway. You know, cuz you doing you've been putting in your hours, you've been making progress, you've been, you know, building relationships in your community with the right people. You've been doing you've been doing what you're supposed to do. Bad vibes. Bernadette, Bernadette said bad vibes. Man, toxic people. Like I know a lot of people say, like, oh, bad vibes, bad vibes, bad vibes. Everybody be saying this now. It's cause it's a it's a trendy thing. But toxic people exist. You know, it's good people and it's bad people. And we can't judge them because at some point we were probably toxic. I know I was I've been a toxic person in my life and I still may have toxicity, you know, that you know comes out in different different um ways, but this is a it's a growing process. So I'm you know I'm trying to be better and we are always trying to be better. But I'm not going to go surround myself with a a whole bunch of toxic people or allow toxic influences on my dreams, on my vision. You know like that's the most important thing. Like what's happening today is one thing. It's just I'm just putting the work in. But what's going on in my mind and my vision for my future, my family, like that's a whole nother precious jewel that I'm just not going to allow anybody to see, get access to, critique or nothing like that. I'm sorry I'm kind of going on a tangent on that, but I really got I really want you guys to understand that toxic people Early on in your company, in your vision, will 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 we'll kill it before it start. You know, even if you got a, a a boyfriend, girlfriend who's saying like, you know, she not being supportive, she not telling you you can do it, he not telling you you got this, he toxic because you need that from that person. You need 
the person that's, that's claiming that they care about you and they love you to be supporting you, you know, and it's hard to be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a home, in a situation, in a relationship, and you're not getting that support. It's damn near impossible to succeed in that, in that environment. It's just impossible. It's like it's hard for a child to succeed in a, in a dysfunctional parenting environment. It's, it's no different. Your, your, your vision, your dreams, your aspirations for your career, your business, and things like that are just like children. They have to be nurtured. They have to be celebrated. They have to be, you know, worked on, work with every day. You got to put hours every day into your business. It's like you got to do with your children. And um, it has to be a great, positive environment. So be, be weary and, you know, pay attention to who... And what people are saying, their facial expression, body language. So, like, if I'm, hey, I got something to tell you, and your body language, I'm done. I'm, oh, never mind. I, never, I, mm, my bad. I'm not even, you know, I'm very careful who I'm telling my business to, the things that I want out of my, you know, f- for my future and stuff like that. Because, you know, just d- different people have different things going on in their lives, and that, that toxic stuff can spill over into you. And it may not even be purpose. It's just, you know, this just their current station in life that does not, it's just not compatible with yours. So on the flip side, when you go to like meet up, um, the SBA, um, what I said, the um, Toastmasters, when you go to these different type of places or you, when you finally do get an accountant and you do find an attorney and you do have a mentor, guess what? You got access to all these new people. Who think like you think. They call like minded people. So you find, you know, you find what you need. So I'm not gonna just paint a negative picture that, oh, everybody's toxic. No. It's certain people who winning and there's certain people who not. So you just have to align yourself with the people who winning the best way you can. And it's gonna be uncomfortable in the beginning. You know? You don't have to go in there talking a whole bunch. Just just show just show your face. Shake some hands, you know, say hello. You know, ask some questions. How did, how did you get here? You know, you got a great business. You a great accountant. How did you get here? I just want to know. I just want to. I just want to be inspired by your story, and um, you know that. Then you were able to make friends, make business partnerships, um, where people who winning, you know, people who are positive and excited about entrepreneurship, people who you know had some success. So, it's not. I'm not. I just want to. I don't want to leave it in a bad note. So it's def, it's definitely people out here who who gonna support you. And, and, and celebrate you and get behind you if they see you're excited and, and you're you're enthusiastic about what you're doing. So, um, yeah, top advisors, mentor, accountability partner, accountant, and uh, business attorney. Your four top advisors I would suggest you start working on. Um, so if there's any questions, we could do a quick Q&A. If you guys have – Bernadette, good morning. Jo- Johnny's Lobbins, hey, hello, how are you doing? Um, she got a question. I've been a living caretaker for the mentally ill for a little over 10 years. And I have went to school for MA. I know the business in and out, the do's and don'ts, but I'm ready, but, and don'ts, but I'm ready to start my own home care business. Where do I start? You at the right place. Lobbins. I don't know how to say your first name. It's a Johnice. I mean, that, that might be right. Johnice. Um, you at the right place. Go check out our website, alancheney.com. Give us a call. Um, if you have any questions, shoot us an email, or you could just message us here, or you know, you can ask a question right here on this on this call. So, but yeah, you in the right place. Check out our website, alancheney.com. <clears throat> if we don't have any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and jump off here. I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. I had a power outage yesterday, so I couldn't do. A, I couldn't do anything i just was operating from my phone so um <clears throat> that's it thanks for joining and uh hopefully hopefully to catch y'all on the next coming up live coming here soon if you have any questions um feel free to give us a call let me get our phone number i can never remember the phone number i'm terrible with phone numbers <clears throat> Nicole Nicole Butler, you said business, what you mean? I hate that I don't know the phone number by heart. 
I'm going to commit to learning the phone number by heart today. That's going to be one thing that I do. I'm going to learn my own company's phone number by heart. <clears throat> phone number is 443-906-3603. It's such an easy number to remember. <clears throat> hey, Pamela, you need to give us a call, Pamela, because we got your stuff over here and we need to get you going. Brother Death said, keep that negative energy away. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, negative, uh, bad vibes scare the money away every time. Money does not, money and money and bad negative people do not coexist. So, <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to jump off here if it ain't no question. The $600 plan, does it include the fees noted at the value stated? So you pay your own fees. We just do we just do all the documents for you. So like, we complete your license for you. We do the policy and procedure. We do actual work, but you have to pay for it. So like, different states have different prices for your fees. Like your LLCs, we'll help you put the paperwork, but you have to pay the actual fee to the state or to your you know to your state when it comes to um your license and stuff like that. The phone number is um four four three. 906-3603. And the good thing about the um somebody did a mad face at me. The good thing about uh right now before the 28th, if you join if you join the done for you program before the 28th, you gonna get the um free website done by our, our vendors who specialize in home care. And uh, assisted living website. So, Alexis, hallelujah. She said, like a learning experience. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, Nicole. You're going to be involved in the process because we got to ask you everything. We're going to, you know, we're going to, the first thing that happens once you make your first payment, you, you know, we're going to send you a questionnaire and we're going to start working on your logo. Then we're going to start working on your business documents. Then you're going to start working with the nurse to get your license and your policies and procedure together. But she's going to be communicating with you. You're going to be communicating with us the whole time. So <clears throat> it's nothing we just going, you know, we can't, you know, name your company for you. We can't pick the colors of your website or kick, create your logo without you. Um, we need to know who's going to be on the staff, the addresses. So like all of these things are stuff that we have to get from you. So. So I'm going to go ahead and jump off of here. If you guys don't have any questions, you can uh, feel free to give us a call. That's 443-906-3603. And um, if you don't get an answer, that's probably because we taking we on another call. Just leave a vo please leave a voicemail, leave a message, or shoot us a text message because you can text that not that line as well. So call us or leave a leave a text message. Um, Alexis Love says, "How much is this?" Um, all our we got a couple different programs, Alexis. Um, you can go to our website, alanchaney.com, and uh, see see what see what see what works for you. Okay, I appreciate everybody today. I appreciate you guys for, for tuning in and letting me speak my piece. Hope you guys go out there and get you, you know, get your top advisors lined up, your accountant, your mentor, your accountability partner, and your business attorney. And don't think you gotta, you know, just because you talking to these people, you gotta give them a whole bunch of money. You just wanna start building relationships. So when you do run across the issue where you did you do need to retain retain them. Or you do need to ask a question. They'll you have somebody you already been contacted. So take care. What is it? Thursday. Happy Thursday. Um, I think it's Thursday. Yeah, happy Thursday. And um, we catch you later. Hopefully, I'll do another. We we could probably jump on here tomorrow around the same time. All right. Take care. Peace.